right, welcome to the 101st episode of the Sawdust Station podcast. I'm Nick from NPG Creations, and Josh is with us from North Country Woodworking. Nap took the night off, he's moving, so uh, he doesn't have internet or all of his equipment set up. Hey, but to fill his void, we have the one, the only, Joey Gonzalez from Steel Blade Woodworks. How you doing, Joey? Doing good. What's going on, everyone? Not much. We're here with you, buddy. <laughs> nope. Just uh, here getting stuff done in the shop, trying to trying to get my shop set up. So along with doing a few other things that I've got going on some uh, little designs that I've done on the uh, Ohm Tech laser. That's what I've been been doing. Busy, busy. Trying to stay cool in this Texas heat. It's a little, a little bit warm down there. Uh, it's been over a hundred, a hundred. It's not, it's not warm. It's melting. Yeah, it's pretty bad this early. Hundred or what? Because we're we're been sitting at uh, today was ninety seven, ninety eight. So I'm kind of curious on what the, the difference is here. Uh, I don't know. Like you guys are humid up there, aren't you? Yeah, we got about hundred percent humidity most of the time, anywhere between ninety and hundred. Uh, but yeah, we're reaching ninety seven. This is like our third to fourth time already. It's been in the high 80s most of the time. Well, I, I haven't I haven't seen – well, it's been a long time, but the heat that we've been getting here lately, it's like early, and we're not even in July, August yet when it's really going to get warm. Yeah, it's – it's uh, we've, we've hit triple digits. Uh, the good thing that's been working for us is that we've had some wind. Um, but once you get into around July, August, that kind of stops, and it's – gets pretty warm where you start getting the heat index is a 109 110 that's gets pretty pretty dangerous it's like a hair dryer outside sometimes but just yeah, walking out that, into it those are the days when you come out in the morning and you're instantly starting to sweat that hit that that warm air that humidity hits you and it's bad coming out from the air condition <laughs> into that so that's what makes it kind of hard having this office here cuz kind of come in here to relax a little bit and you just don't want to go back out into that shop once you go in you don't go back out (laughs) well don't you well don't you have air conditioners you set up in there yet not they're there i haven't put them in i'm starting to get to that phase where i'm going to start setting that up uh it should get sidetracked there's so many things that need to be done and i have those squirrel moments where like for instance right now i've been setting up my kind of like I call it a island there in the shop but it's work, it's a workbench and I've been setting it up and storage and then like my track saw tracks and I'm like well let me go print some 3D uh track saw track holders so I come in here get them going and then you start doing other things and it's like oh well I can mount this on there so I need to go design that for the 3D printer or do something on the laser I can make it with the laser so I'll come in here and design that Kind of like the Starbond holder little cart that I made or caddy. I was messing with that and I was like, man, I need a place to put these because it's just, they're everywhere. I have some in boxes and some still over here on the workbench. I said, I need to just combine everything together. So I went down that rabbit hole. I came inside (laughs) and I uh, got that made up in Lightburn and sent it to the laser and now I'm putting them out there to sell. I've had a couple of orders already and people are asking. So um, kind of just take. Where do you have just, those for sale? It's just right now. It's just hearsay. I don't have a website or anything. So it's just going to kind of be through my Instagram. No, I haven't made one yet. I'm trying to. I, I don't know if I want to do that. If if I'm going to do something and y'all could probably tell me what what are the costs? Because I hear that they take quite a bit off of what you're selling, you know, the, the final price or whatever. It's, it's like so, six or 7%. I can't remember exactly I, what I do to mitigate that is I just jack the price up. <laughs> so, I mean, and I don't gouge it, but I just make sure that I'm making what I would normally make. It's just right, that people right. order through my Etsy page. They're going to pay a little more just because that on top of that, they get the satisfaction and the comfort of knowing that Etsy's going to cover their, their bet. If I don't follow through and, whatever but i also make the same amount of money that i would if i was to sell it to like you like just hey through instagram 
because I know some people who don't know me from, you know, Adam, and they're like, "Hey, man, can you make this?" Like, yeah, I can make that. Well, how do you want to pay? Or and they're like, "Oh, well, uh, do you have a website that I could pay through?" So, you know, I I, I have Square, so I send Square uh, invoices to people, but sometimes that's just not enough. They want actual like guarantee. You know what I mean? Right. So I, I've been looking at Squarespace, and I mean, if I'm gonna Obviously, I'm going to stay. I'm going to keep doing this for long term. So I'm kind of thinking of just go ahead and uh, setting up a website. That way I can control it a lot. I have more control and uh, list my things if I'm going to sell files. Because uh, some of these, some of this uh, stuff on lasers, if people have a laser and they have the capability, then I can just sell the file. And they can do it. Now, if I'm trying to sell it, then I'm kind of taking that option away from myself because then they can turn around and sell it because how am I going to control them not turning around and putting that out for sale on their platform? You know, That's a risk yeah. that a lot of people yeah. end up taking, though. I mean, because, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where, like, we I think we talked about this a couple episodes ago, um, where basically anyone can – it's clean cut woodwork. So was that episode with him where someone can look at your product and they can try to rebuild it. But it's all the stuff that you did to get to that point and to get that file to that point. And that's, a, you know, the big difference in everything. I mean, there's a risk there, but I think you're right. You're going to do this long term. You're not moving anywhere. Um, a website might be a better uh, idea for you. I know for me getting <clears throat> about the same line as Nick here, getting something online and then getting something that people recognize uh, because if we move or like we have people coming in um, word of mouth is great, but being able to say, Hey, go ahead, check out my Etsy at your leisure. It's different than saying, go check out my Instagram. It's like a portfolio they can go check out. And I've had people do that and then place order directly through me based on some of this they saw on Etsy. So it's like a splash page for me almost. Um, and then right. utilizing it with square I get to actually invoice and it counts as a sale at Etsy and I avoid some of these fees that happen. <clears throat> so uh, there's ways to go about it and there's ways to uh, make money and uh, use Etsy as a tool, which it really is, um, and still drive business into you on the digital front. Um, I I don't sell all that much from just Etsy. Like I said, it's usually people looking at Etsy. I use Square, which is attached to it. It counts as a sale. So they don't get the match. I said it's up to 8% now. They don't get the yeah. 8% from me. They just they show it as a sale. So when I have new clients that aren't sure of you know a local business, they, the confidence boost is there because I got good ratings and everything like that. Matt brings up a valid point too, You know, just to use all of them. Like he has Etsy, he has a website and use Instagram where you can, you know, if you want, you can do paid promotions, put it out there. So that's kind of what I plan to do, you know, starting off right now is just put it on Instagram, shoot a video, promote it and just advertise it and see where that goes before I um, develop the web page. Uh, Etsy, I don't know. I've been procrastinating a lot with it. I I've been thinking about doing it and every time I go to do it, I'm like, ah. so I just kind of shy away from it. I don't, you know, so I don't know, you know, it's your business. It's, it's, this is something you're trying to grow. And of course with business, you're going to have to go out of your comfort zone. There's, there's times where it's just a necessity. Uh, but if it don't feel right, it's almost like pricing. If it doesn't feel right, you're probably not doing what you really want to do. You've already said what you want to do. You want a website. <clears throat> And I don't know your experience, website design, or which way you're looking at different uh, sites that allow you to build that, but it might be the perfect means for you. You've already built your name up in the Instagram community. You do, uh, you do a bunch of lives. You, you know, you come on the podcast and other podcasts, and you know, you're known for the stuff you make, um, and then your YouTube videos, which you just published a part ten to your Avid build. Uh, so if you haven't checked that out, please check him up on YouTube because he has a great series on that. You have built everything you need to build. I think that a website would do you just fine because you can host your YouTube videos on there as well. Feel like a one-stop to see Joey and what it's up to. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's, it's kind of where I'm leaning to. Um, I didn't, as far as some of this stuff, it, it uh, when I designed them, it, I didn't think it was going to, I was going to get re people requesting to have, you know, buy them. And then it started, you know, it's already started. And I've had people reach out to me, direct messaging me on Instagram, um, you know, curious about it so it's kind of like well i guess i need to take the next step and uh get something going you know uh that that's doing this shop setup is gonna basically i guess um uh, i'm gonna be creating a lot of things because you know storage organization and i have the tools the means to do it so um it may something that I designed to store some, you know, a tool or whatever, turn around and put it out on the market and sell it. You know, Pete, there's somebody always looking for something, you know? Well, you actually did a project not too long ago for your spray cans where mm -hmm. you did an organizer, which I have like a small version of it, but I loved yours because like, how many cans does it hold? Like 140, 144. I might have underestimated <laughs> Just, just a little <laughs> bit there. Uh, do you have one for seventy five? Because I don't think I even have that much. Well, the the cool thing with this design is that um, it's simple. And when I when I went out to make it, I was like, okay, I got to keep in mind that not everybody has a CNC, so it can be made for your application. I mean, you know, however many you want to make it, so. You can easily take this design and do a, you know, skill saw, a hole saw, and a drill, and you can make it. You know, uh, you can use screws if you do have an, a little brad nailer or air nailer. You can, you can make this. It's very simple. It's not anything difficult. The only thing is, is that I use the CNC because I have it, and uh, I didn't want to drill 144 holes <laughs> by hand. <laughs> so um it's uh it's just common stuff it's a piece of mdf and some one by material and you can make it actually it's fairly quick it took me longer to make it because i did record content so that is going to be a video that goes out on youtube uh, after the avid deal i will uh put that out there and show how i made it and then you know you can pick and choose the way you want to do it. But uh, in the video to describe, you know, using just your regular tools that some people may have, or if you have that uh, CNC, well, you know, I have the files and stuff for that, that uh, I made on VCarve Pro, you know, anyhow, but yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of the angle, I guess, as I'm setting up this shop, the different things, the different little gadgets that I'm going to use, whether it's developed on the 3D printer with the laser and or the CNC, you know, uh, that I look to put out. If it's something that I think the community may like and want, then, yeah, I'll put it out there. I'll put some feelers out and see how it's going to how they're going to take it. And then we'll go from there. That, I like the idea that you're thinking about, you know, people so, without the laser, people without the CNC. Because not everyone has these tools, and it's important to consider that. I mean, like, what you have going on with that uh, spray paint can organizer um, is something that anyone and their brother can utilize in their shop. Because, let's face it, we all have spray cans of some sort. I don't care if you're doing polyacrylic <laughs> to clear to, like, you know, regular spray paint. I mean, I have a shelf in there that I have those uh, shelves that I have. And then I have an additional shelf that basically hosts a bunch of spray cans. So it's definitely it's something worth having in your shop. Um, you got anything else like that? I know you have the uh, the CA glue organization. And you have the spray can organization. So I've got some that are going to get sent out. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to send it in a kit. So this is like the CA glue deal. So one, it'll cut down on shipping and then you use your CA glue to put it together. Just mortise and tenon type deal, quick and easy. Then I have this that I made, and this is just a rough, I've 
already went in and corrected some of the things that I wanted to do. So like if you're mixing multiple colors of resin and you're going to do a, a multiple color resin pour, this holds your cups while you're mixing everything so you don't take the chance of spilling. Something we came up with in a hangout and I made this size and I've got a great big one that's a 12 cup holder, which I've already had some people uh, want one. So that's going to be going out as well. Um, so just little gadgets like that that come up uh, during while we're doing this stuff, you know, and put it out there. If it sells, it sells. If it doesn't, you know, I made it for myself and for some other friends and they're using them on their shows. So uh, people are, are wanting them. So that's pretty cool. Hey, Joey, yeah. have, have you seen any issues? And this is a question from, uh, from our Patreon, but have you seen any issues or had any trouble with pricing your stuff due to the constant increases of wood and shipping prices? Or it's a good, that's a good question. So, um, you know, I reached out to you, Nick, last week on I was having some issues with the inconsistency of the material I was using for the star bond holders. And uh, within that material, then I knew kind of what you were going to say, and I just didn't want to because I didn't. The prices are just crazy. Still are. They're so volatile right now. But I did find some Baltic birch and it raised the price, but the quality of the of the product coming out of, using Baltic birch on the laser to me, once I saw it, how it worked is the way to go. Hands down, whatever it's going to cost. Once I once I combined my cuts or my uh, running these like I did like a run where I cut like 10 of these. CA glue holders out and I did multiple files that cut that are cutting um, like say the base part of it and I try to try trying to maximize the amount of parts I can do on one piece of material to cut down on the loss so when it when it did that I was able to figure out okay this is what this unit is costing me to make just in material. And which brings up another point that I was going to ask y'all. What are y'all's, what is y'all's rate for laser? What do y'all charge? You know that I know that's probably a million dollar question. So how do y'all figure that in? Let's say on an hourly rate or 30 minute rate. How do you break that down? Go ahead, Nick. Uh I got a long answer, so. So I I typically have a lot of set prices for, so something the first time I do it, I'm never going to be like, it's never going to take less than 30 minutes, if that makes sense. Because you got to do the design and then you got to do all the other baloney and make your mistakes and then come back and fix it and get it just right. So most of my things that I make, and this is kind of a, a good question because I have a few items that I make that take less than an hour to make. and. I just let the price the same. I still make, <laughs> I still make the same amount as if I was designing it and stuff. But uh, they're paying for a product, and the price hasn't changed, as far as they know, since at least for two years now. And it's just, uh, I'll give you an example. One of some of my my plaques that I make, the smaller plaques that I make, they are sixty five dollars, and that's just because it doesn't take that long to make it. It's a smaller project. I just scaled down a larger one. It's, you know, it doesn't cost me but $3 in wood. So that and the time on the CNC machine and a little bit of paint and a sand sand job. So it, once you establish your 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 price for your all your research and development on a project, a product, uh, you might be a little high. You could always just cap it back a little bit, but that's where I'm at. I'm I just try to keep things simple for me. So when people ask me, because people are always asking me, hey, how much is this? I'm like, all right, this this much. This size is this much. What's your budget? The, my side of the house, when it comes to lasering large items, I actually have a very large uh, plaque I'm doing at the end of this month. And I'm trying to, it took me a while to come up with a price because A, 
the laser is still new and I don't know its full capability at that time. So I took in consideration what Nick kind of hit on. Um, I have a standard price for a lot of my stuff and that's where the Etsy page comes into play. And that's actually where square comes into play too, because I can have a catalog of my items. I do. Um, and a lot of that's categorized in large, medium, and small plaques, a certain size and whatnot. Um, but f- to answer your basic question of like hourly or like every 30 minutes, it's all rolled up into um, the, the price. I don't have an hourly or 30 minute price range for a, a laser job or the CNC that is <clears throat> um, because I, I base it on, you know, how long it's going to be on there, um, the materials, you know, after, before finishing all that and that's how i come up with the price and you know there's been projects like nick already said where it's been a little higher but it's because i didn't know better and it's actually paid off through all these price increases which i think hits on another question we have um because i had a little higher i made a little money in the beginning but through you know covid and all this as the wood prices went higher i couldn't maintain the same price for my projects which help me because then you know everyone's jacking up their projects and their pricing i was able to maintain that price and i got a lot of customer base from that now how i achieved that is not necessarily the right answer but it was a learning curve that i was going through um and now it's it's yeah go ahead i want to hit on something real quick go, going back to that patreon question because i don't know if i answered that correctly my thing is, is when you're going to when you're going to start making things like for instance I'm just going to use a CA glue holder maximizing the parts on the material to where you can cut it, it helps you actually cut down on the price per unit cuz you're not using as much of it that's what I did I can't take this whole file and put it on a piece of and cut it out because I'm wasting a lot of material so that's going to drive the cost up per unit. So trying to, I had to go back in there and shuffle around the file and put certain pieces on one file and the other, which actually utilized more of the material and I had less waste. Therefore, it gave me more units per sheet and actually drove the cost down because I know I can get X amount of units off of a four by eight sheet this is what it's going to cost me. Buy and up yeah, your, and that makes you know that makes sense for a high production of one item. Unfortunately, I think I, I don't want to speak for Nick, but he's not here. For us, it's a lot of one-offs. Like a lot of the plaques we do, we're, we're not doing you know ten or fifteen of the same thing. Um, I would like to get down that road where I can, and that's what I was trying to do with my conversion charts. Something simple that everyone and their brother could do. But you know, I did have a couple orders. Um, <clears throat> But I wanted something I can, you know, do a cost. How many per sheet could I get out of it and then be able to supply that to uh, Etsy and then ship it out and make a profit? But I failed on my first attempt. I don't if you recall the previous episode, I actually ended up paying out of pocket for the, those projects. But um, yeah, I, it, price per hour works for some shops. Ours, I, I don't think it's something that we can consider quite yet. I know Nick is hitting on getting you know commercial grade cnc and, and he's pretty much there with the laser now he's might have to consider that because it takes a lot more power to run his laser you know and he has a lot of space he's not utilizing every time he runs that versus what i do maybe someday we'll get to where you're sitting at it's a very smart way to go about it uh, especially for the stuff you're creating but unfortunately i don't think it really applies to us at the moment it's there, but not at the level that you're considering it. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, you bring up a valid point. When you're doing one offs, it's going to be a total different animal. You know, uh, price of lumber, I mean, it's just, it's just bad. Uh, I cringe every time I go. I'm just like, because I know what I used to pay for that stuff. And it's just, oh, absolutely. It's insane. It's insane, and and both the birch is a perfect example of what you're you're talking about. Like what we used to pay for it used to be less than maple plywood, quarter inch maple plywood. We now use maple plywood instead of Baltic birch because you can't find Baltic birch, and then when you do, it's more than the maple. And it's not true Baltic birch. 
it's no, being made. made somewhere else now. So the quality is not, yeah, the quality is not there. Uh, I still have a few sheets of five by five Baltic birch half inch that I paid, I think like $27 a sheet five by five. It, and that was during the pandemic. And once 2020, uh, later on in 2021 and stuff, when stuff started skyrocketing like crazy, and now where we're at, I still don't see what the driving cost of this is. Now, Baltic Birch, I know the situation of that, but I'm talking everything else because you can go to some of these stores, and I'm not talking hardwood stores, I'm talking big box stores, and you can see the stacks of lumber on the outside that they're just waiting because I, the, the, nobody's really buying it. I mean, you have to if you got to do certain things. The home builders are still doing it. You're still seeing homes pop up everywhere. But the DI wires and stuff, when you're having to pay $80 for a sheet of regular three-quarter inch pine plywood, it's insane. You know, you can't. it, it really makes you think when you're trying to do a little quick project. So that's, that's what I took into consideration when I built the spray can holder. It's like, okay, let me try to get this cost down as much as possible that I can. And I think I came up with. $98, $98 for that build. I wanted to speak to something when you were talking about the situation. So obviously everybody knows what world events are going on. And the Baltics is not a stable area at the moment because of um, just depending on you're talking about embargoes or uh, sanctions and all that stuff. So that supply chain is going to be running a little dry. But when the obviously – all taking an economics class here or there, the supply dwindles. Obviously, Baltic Birch is going to be non existent if this thing keeps going on. Um, but the demand increases because you know, I have all these cabinet makers and all that stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. so the American made domestic made stuff, the stuff made in Canada, the demand is becoming outrageous. Um, now we all know the pandemic when that happened, they shut down all the mills. So that's why the price jumped up. And then the, I think people just got greedy at the end there. <laughs> they were just like, oh, yeah, the bills are still shut down. And there's people still at work. You know what I mean? But um, that's why I believe that the price – and I'm not an economics coach or anything like that. I don't know anything about geopolitical situations and, and all that jazz. But I do know that any – like look at gasoline. It's over four dollars a gallon for me and Joey. I don't know what it is up in New. I can't even imagine what it is up in New Jersey. It just went down. Uh, we were at four sixty-seven, and now it's at four fifty. I would say seven. I think it went down about ten cents. Well, we're not. Well, we're at four nineteen um, here. Uh, it. That's the again, one thing I wanted to take back. I wanted to get gas cans and take it. <laughs> start shipping it back. It was so bad. Seeing it, it was four ten. I think was when I was there, and I'm like four twelve, and I'm like, man, I wish I had my truck. Just fill that up. I, I don't know how they would feel though if you were to get on an airplane with a bunch of jerry cans full of gas. <laughs> It'd be okay as long as it fits in the little overhead compartment. I think you're good. Has his cargo. Has his cargo. People, people down here were taking screwdrivers to people's gas tanks and like just draining fuel. That's how bad it got. Siphoning gas out of cars, all that stuff. I did see a TikTok where a guy put uh it was filling his bed of his truck up with gas. He had like uh a tarp yeah. down. <laughs> He's just dumping it in and you see it leaking all around. That's I mean, four dollars a gallon and more like I think it was like four sixty something here a while ago, maybe a couple weeks ago. Now it's like four eighteen. But um that's crack prices. That's insane. Pretty soon people are going to be doing some weird stuff for gas. I'm just saying. Well, you know, something, something's got to give eventually. Uh, there's just no way to sustain this. There's, you, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty bad. You paying four nineteen a gallon of gas, $80 sheet of plywood, you know, I mean, it's, and with that, though, you got to remember, like your customers, they're not uh, they're looking at it like this. They want to go local as long as local isn't going to kill their pocketbook to the point where it's ridiculous. Right. 
Because I know yeah. some people are like, oh, well, you know, I don't mind paying a little extra for local. That's cool. But what's your overhead come to when you're paying $80 for that sheet of plywood? Your profit margin sure takes a dive. Big and time. then, and so, I mean, what's the natural reaction? Push the price up. But when you got people on Etsy selling stuff for way less, how can you compete? Well, that's what I. That's the thing. You look at Etsy and you see some prices of some of this stuff that they're selling, and it's like, how how are they doing it? How are they selling a tumbler for eight bucks? Uh, is it etched already? Fully decorated, yeah. Just just done. How how are they doing that? I can speculate, but I can't be certain. Because you know, Nick, what a price is going to cost wholesale. Your time, your laser, you know. So to, to put things in perspective, if you're going to buy a tumbler from like JDS Industries, you can get a case of them for roughly $7 a unit. And there's like, what, 24 in a case maybe? Mm-hmm. But, you're, you know, obviously your your front end overhead there is – the tumblers and then whatever la- labor you put into it. If you're laser etching off the powder coat or some people actually do the epoxy rolling on them. I don't know how the heck they can sell tumblers. Well, I do not actually, they use plastic ones and they roll the epoxy over top of it. And that's how they get their, that's how but, they come but up with even, But even, even, even that fine for, for it to be worth your time, you would at least have to sell it for 25, 30 bucks. You know, yeah. somewhere, somewhere. Right I agree. There. I agree. It's not worth you, it. Shipping alone. <laughs> yeah. Shipping alone. Oh, that's another, that's another beast. Yeah. You know, prices of the shipping is going up because gas is going up. Oh yeah. We're all going to, we're all, it's a one, excuse my language, but it's one giant sandwich and we're all taking a bite. I'm just saying. Yeah. And then you're, you're small business trying to compete with like Amazon where you can go on there and buy that stuff already made fairly cheap. You know, it's hard. It's hard to do. It's hard to keep those price points at a reasonable rate with still trying to make, you know, a little bit of profit. It's tough. It's so tough. I've here. here's where I'm at right now. I'm still still trying to inflate my prices to match. And I'm not, I'm not trying to do it so abruptly that people are just like, geez, dude, you like you gouging. But I was I'm tr- I was trying to do it gradually and it's working out so far. I haven't had any no's yet. If that if that's what you know what I mean, like my my set prices, they were like, uh, let's put it this way: for one of the larger larger plaques that I make was eighty five dollars. If it's a handoff, not a shipping. Now I charge ninety five dollars. People are just like, okay, no big deal, an extra ten bucks for a plaque. But when you once you add shipping, once you add my fees that I I I have to cover to Etsy because I'm not paying them. They're going to pay them. Now you got a plaque that costs me or that I normally charge like $85 pre, you know, pre crisis mode. And it's charging the customer $120, $125 to, I've had zero sales on my plaques on Etsy as in the past month. That's where I'm at. Uh, but I have nobody yet to have anybody in person tell me no, because they just, ex- they feel that $10 more is, is, is okay. Do you have a margin that you think? People will pay over what your normal price is. Joey? Me? I mean, on some of this stuff, you got to be careful because, I mean, right there, it's a custom type deal. You're, I, I haven't found one. Is there stuff out there? Yeah. I think trying to push this item for this item, if I tried to go an extra $10, I think it'd be a hard sell once you add shipping in. I think it would be. Because, mind you, selling it like that, it's going to be around ten bucks to ship it. How much? Well, mm-hmm. how much so is your package it's, weight? It's, it's it's twenty. It's well, I haven't weighed that yet. I haven't weighed it, but I'm just estimating it a priority USPS. It'll fit in that package, and through um, I looked at rates with uh, Pirate Ship and USPS about ten bucks. If it fits in there, it'll ship for for about nine nine seventy something, right? doesn't matter if it fits in that envelope it's going to go for that amount now if i can get it cheaper fine i'll try to do it i'm going to go put it on a scale when we get done here because i haven't actually weighed it i was waiting on my scale to come in to see what it weighed but if i if i up the price of that i'm still i'm still sitting all right at what i'm charging for it 
But if the wood goes up and I got to raise my prices, I think it's going to be a hard sell. I really do. I think people will shy away because now putting $10 on and then if they're here in the state of Texas having to charge taxes, even though you don't think that that's a given, but still all those three amounts in there now takes it to a whole nother level. And they're going to be like, oh, I don't know about that, you know, and I still got to put it together. That's yeah. That's the that's the the killer thing. Um, have, there's a specific maker that we all know that's on Instagram, and uh, this maker sells items that you have to put together as well. And for the sake of cost of shipping, and you know, this like basically dimensions on the box, which in the end it ends up saving the customer a bunch of money because they're not paying for a full full piece of uh, equipment that's fully built. They just have to do a little bit of legwork for it. I think that that's probably the future of where we're going with anything that we make that has to be, that's like three dimensional, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Um, Within reason, obviously. Yeah. Like, have you ever shipped a table before? No, I have not. Would you ship it with the legs on or off? I wouldn't ship it at all. (laughs) You wouldn't ship it at all? There you go. There's the answer. I mean, like, my business is not big enough to be shipping tables and stuff. It, I have yet to have a customer be willing to pay shipping prices, as is some of the shipping prices I ask for some of the clients. Like the biggest project I'll be shipping is this 40 by 24 inch plaque I'll be doing at the end of the month. And I had to do estimate shipping for that. And it came up to quite a bit and they were okay with it because they're using government funds. But like I was nervous. That was a very nerve wracking moment for me. Because I thought for sure that the shipping alone was going to have a hard no off. As far as having it increase in your projects for people to notice, I really think it depends what it is, honestly. For um, the conversion charts, I had to put a $10 increase on there because shipping alone. And I've had no orders since I did that. That hurt 100%. $10 or $20 on a larger project that people can see you put quality and time into I think they're more willing to pay. Times are hard for everyone right now. I mean, between gases, I mean, shipping, you name it, just normal life, groceries. And people are watching their money a little bit more than they used to. I've had a couple of notes for some of the products because of their price range. Now I offer different ways they could pay, but still, like, they don't need it at this moment. And, you know, they might come back. They may not. I can't change my pricing to meet everyone's needs. Unfortunately, I wish I could. But I, I, you guys have hit on this. You need to make that profit margin. To, I got bills to pay now. The business has bills. Uh, I, I pay for my truck out of the business. I pay for that laser out of the business. So I have to make those payments. Like regardless of like you know, Susan wanting this project or not, I have to make enough project, profit to pay those. And that's how I look at it. I mean, it's not being cold hearted. I try not to be, but. My prices are my prices for a reason. Um, I feel like I, right. I can get those prices, and some people are willing to pay. So It's just not the payments. It's the upkeep. Eventually, that yeah, laser yeah. tube is going to go out. You're going to have to buy that laser tube. Uh, belt's going to break. You're going to have to buy that. Just maintenance. You know what I mean? Just things that you got to take into consideration. Hopefully, I got about 7,000 hours before that happens. <laughs> 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 but I recently... <laughs> Uh, fun fact, fun fact. I recently shipped my pants. And that's uh, why I, he I wears the sh- pants. I, no, I shipped, shipped, I shipped my pants. Yes, you know, know. you ever seen that commercial before from Kmart? Yes. Um, I even shipped my we? bed. <laughs> Joey, uh, we're getting a little later in the podcast, but I did want to hit on something that I think is a huge, huge, uh, thing that you do. And it's the virtual craft festival that you, uh, you were, you attend you've done it what two to three times now right twice yeah i'll be doing the third one i think it's coming up in Jul- on july 23rd or 22nd actually J- jp woodworks that was in the live on youtube he's the one that came up with that he's a very good friend of ours from the uk so him and carl jacobson which is a real uh wood turner real popular on youtube um, they came up with this when, uh, when the pandemic hit 
and it was a way nobody could leave, nobody could do anything. So they're like, they came up with this to be able to bring something to people out there and watch different makers do different things. So it's pretty cool. You know, uh, you can watch anything from sewing to food being made to, well, like the last one I did was on leather work. Uh, time before that was with the laser and there's wood turning resin, uh, you know, you name it. You got Jake Thompson doing his, uh, regular show Saturday morning cartoons, which is, if you want to know anything about resin, uh, you know, there you go. There, there's all those people doing certain things. So it's a wide variety, uh, of, of deals being done that day. I think it's like 16 hours worth of makers. <laughs> it's crazy. That's, uh, that's a lot. Uh, yeah. When we start off, it usually starts off at four in the morning, our time. Cause Jamie page will take off UK time. So we're up around three 30 in the morning. And then we go all the way until Carl Jacobson finishes out the show, which is, I want to say eight, 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 eight o'clock. So Yeah. It's pretty cool. Don't it's a big deal. I, I think it's it's a it's a great opportunity for makers to get out there, check things out, and even show what they could do. Um, but you said the next day is in July, right? July. I want to say it's the twenty third. Don't quote me on that, but it's it's a Saturday. I I don't have a calendar right here close to me, but I think it's twenty second or twenty third is when it'll be coming on again. And um, you know, you got an hour segment. So whatever you're going to do has to be done within that hour. Um, and it's pretty cool. Um, you know, a little nerve wracking, but you know, we start planning ahead and, <laughs> you know, like the leather deal I was doing where I made that knife scabbard or sheath, whatever. Um, I had to set it up in stages just to, cause Mind you, if you're going to be doing something like this, this is about a few days worth to let stuff dry and whatever. So I set it up to where I could take everybody through the different steps. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's fun. A lot of a lot of interesting people doing different things on there. It's it's cool to watch. Are you guys getting a lot of traffic on that? Uh, as far as viewers, like during the shows. Oh yeah, I mean. I mean, me, I'm fairly new, so I think uh, I don't know exactly how many I had the last time. I didn't really pay attention, but I want to say probably throughout the live, I was probably about 40, 40 or so people in there. Um, the other makers, some see over 100, just depends, and it stays through the whole the whole time. So it's fairly new, and it's just trying to get it out there. and. Uh, you know, I know Jamie tries to reach out to different people, uh, trying to, you know, they had Jimmy DeResta on the time before the first time I did it, Jimmy DeResta was on there. Um, so Jamie's been doing this for a long, so Jamie's been, yeah, Jamie DeResta is pretty, Jamie's been doing this for a long time. So he knows a lot of people, you know, um, he's been involved in the community for many years, him, him and Carl and Jake and all them, you know, a bunch of guys, there's a, a bunch of guys from the UK that do wood turning like Wayne, the wood turner, you know, very, very skilled makers. So, um, you learn a lot of stuff watching those guys do it. They're, <laughs> they're quick. <laughs> you know, if you're interested in wood turning and stuff like that, those guys are, those guys are awesome. They show you a few things, you know? Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's, it seems like as we progress through this, the more and more that they do it, it seems like more and more people are getting attracted and they're coming to it and watching. Um, and you know, they, they'll send out a playlist and you can kind of go through there and see and pick and choose what you want to see and set your reminders and of the different makers, you know, they had a guy on there doing a cosplay where he was building a, he, just some awesome stuff. This dude makes a, Oh, what are they called? I can't think of it, but just, he, kind of like replicas of deals for like videos or whatever. I don't know if I'm describing it right, but it's awesome. I mean, just some crazy different things uh, that they do. Heck, if you want to learn how to sew, 
there's you can learn <laughs> they have a hour segment in there which you find very useful i tell you what i watch it and i was like that's how you do that i never knew that and that gal is awesome he walks you through and shows you you know pretty pretty neat stuff you know i think it's yeah, a great I, concept it's, it's a I great idea. man sewing is very useful especially when you have to pay for your own uniforms <laughs> yeah <laughs> Josh, you uh, you go through that what's in your shop segment yet? Yeah, we can hit off. You want to start, man? Or do you want me to take it? Uh, no, I'll go ahead and take it. Uh, I've got uh, a lot of stuff in my shop that's on its way out of my shop at the moment. It's all on the kitchen table, ready to get shipped. I'm going to put some shipping labels on it tonight and send it, send it, uh, send them to their new owners. I just finished up a, a huge coin rack it's like 42 inches long 43 inches long something like that it's on my instagram that thing was like last minute very very last minute but uh it the guy made it worth it uh i'll post i think i posted pictures of it or uh, at least a reel or something like that but i'll go ahead and post the they they handed it off to a gentleman today Uh, another guy made had me bought he he ordered a uh, plaque from me so they're doing these plaques in the style of wine barrel lids Oh, okay, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. but they're like, I don't know where we can get wine barrel lids, and if we do have, get wine barrel lids, it's probably going to cost us a lot of money. So, red oak around here is not too expensive. So, I just like glue up some red oak and cut it out into a circle, and then route the edges to make it look like a wine barrel lid. That's a pretty cool concept, man. Uh, especially like grabbing oak like that. Booyah! And it doesn't have to be as big as what they used to be. Like for the actual wine barrel lid, it can, they can make it. They can scale it. So the guy was like awesome he ordered a couple plaques off me um he's about to order another one i mean and it all that that laser dude on the the 60 watt the bed was smaller so what i had to do was i would take a circle and i would cut it uh in light burn and i would cut the circle um just so it was like you could see like the the sides of it so i could line up that that wine barrel lid in there and i had to keep the text all within the 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 usable dimensions of the of the laser bed so now i just laser the whole circle on there and send it baby i don't have to worry about it so life's so much better now i I can i can sleep on that bed it's so big but um i'm I'm gearing up to go to jesse four's house this coming week i think uh i already mentioned that but i'm super excited to go raid his his shop um probably going to draw a bunch of phallic objects all over the place and one before i leave and uh yeah we're gonna have a good time we're gonna go to uncle larry's after we're done um and just have a good old time so uh that's all i got going on in my shop uh how about you there josh uh busy uh june is a busy month knocking out a whole bunch of stuff have my calendar pretty full uh basically i think i'm done taking orders for this month um, have a whole bunch of plaques. I just finished a, a mass sergeant marine uh, plaque. Got it delivered today. Um, I really like how it turned out. I did a nice walnut plaque. There's a lot of engraving involved. With that, some lessons learned. Um, but I also took some acrylic and I made the center uh, chevron out of acrylic. So it's black uh, acrylic on walnut, and it just it looks really good. Um, I was re- pretty proud of how it turned out. Uh, but as far as the lessons learned when it comes to uh, lasering is something basically you learn as you go. Um, there's some things you could pick up beforehand and I knew from the diode and the glow forge. But this particular plaque, there was like a four to five inch space on each side. I was doing a circle and I didn't turn on this particular setting and it would do a little bit of line here. They go to the other side of the plaque, a little line there, and it took forever. Thankfully, I called up the Dr. Laser nap, and he told me there's a setting I can go ahead and utilize that allows me to allow it, the laser to actually carve image or engrave images as it goes and not waste all that time going back and forth over the white space. Um, dial talk, it's white space. You can set the, uh, the speed to go higher. And then with the CO2, it's a different setting. So it was a learning curve, and I wasted a lot of time. But I will we'll not do that again. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, plaques. I got two plaques for two kernels going out this month. I have um, 
uh shadow two shadow boxes i'll be doing i'll be doing a kind of fun hollywood star type project uh that's due this month i have that big uh new mexico project uh two smaller plaques i'll be doing for the jojo uh he really wants me to do some more uh cherry signs for him and then uh i'll be actually taking back the sign i did for him the nice cherry one and he wants me to paint black on the lettering because I did that with the other one. He liked it so much. I'm going to do it with the other side so they match. But, yeah, I, I just have a bunch of, you know, people wanting things done in June. Um, it's but For some reason, this month has been one of the busier months. Um, but with the laser, it's been making jobs a lot easier, a um, lot faster. Uh, and then, you know, with the CNC now working, that's definitely helped my life a lot. Um and this last week during the holidays, I took a day and actually reorganized the shop a little bit. Per Joey's and Matt from Wacky Works Construction, I got rid of some junk plywood that I've been holding on to with dear life for a while. And in the words of my son, Dad, why are you wasting all that wood? Which broke my heart. <clears throat> I put it out front and allowed anyone in the brother to take what I could not use. So hopefully they're having a big bonfire or they're utilizing for a project of some sort. So I got it organized. I have a place for all my laser goods underneath the CNC now. Um, I got my my rack back and I'm utilizing just for like ready to go uh, wood. And then the other racks kind of like some extra plywood and then like slabs. Uh, so a sense of organization has been restored in the shop, which is nice. And, uh, you know, just fine touches here and there. It's one of those things where, you know, the shop is progressing nicely and I do not mind. As I progress, get new tools such as the laser, things need to change. And to get rid of some of the scraps took me a minute. <laughs> Cause you know, we just talked about it, plywood, some of it's birch and you just, it might be a small scrap, but you know how much that birch plywood costs. So it's just, it's hard to part with. Anyway, can I, you hear me now? Yes, we, we can. can hear you now. Yeah, so I heard about the rack that you made, right? Uh, I I reorganized my racks. I don't like the way the racks. Yeah, I like a neat rack. I'm just saying. Yeah, me too. Well, you know, I had too much on one rack, and it kind of slooped a little bit, so I needed. Uh, Ah, you don't need an uneven rack. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) If it starts to sag, uh, saggy racks are no good. Anyway, go ahead, Joey. (laughs) I hoard them, Josh. I got a whole pile of stuff. Right, I could see it. I can see it, but I, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I, I've got, yeah, I need to take my own advice. Yeah. I have a stockpile of stuff. It's, it's, it's hard to, cause you're like, I can make something out of that or I can use that for something, but eventually, eventually, yeah, even, eventually I'm going to have to, as I start moving on and, and getting this shop set up, I do start throwing stuff away because it's just in the way. Uh, and I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty. I, I told you to get rid of it, and I'm over here with the whole pile of junk sitting in the corner. <laughs> I want to well, see got the, your – He's got the space for it, though. That's what I'm saying. True, like, true. true that. And, th- and that's something that, unfortunately – I don't have a big enough shop for everything I want to do. Like all my scraps, I want to be able to use like the hardwood scraps and make epoxy uh, chicory boards with and stuff like that. But I don't have the mold. I don't have the room to set that up. Um, And I did keep some of the scrap plywood and I'm going to do some stuff with the laser, test some stuff out, some ideas I have. And that was a perfect candidate for that. And I would have done it until I was about to throw it away. And I was like, "Mm, I could use this real quick. So, I got rid of a lot of the, like, when I say junk plywood, I'm talking about stuff I built the benches with in my shop. The stuff that have a bunch of holes and stuff like that. It was very few pieces of, like, birch plywood. If they were, they were, like, maybe 10 by 3, you know what I'm saying? The small off cuts of stuff that you couldn't even build a jig with. Or if you did, it was a very small jig. But what do you do with scrap... What do you do with scraps, Nick? And then we can wrap this podcast up. I make reels of myself throwing them away that gets over 10,000 views. That's what I do. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> okay. Yes, I don't know if you guys saw that reel of me throwing scrap wood away. But yes, for some reason, 
some reason the Instagram algorithm went nuts over that and was like, it, oh, check this guy out. It's completely random, man. You never know what you're going to get when you throw that I, kind of stuff in there. Honestly, I'll try and sell off cuts that are usable for most things, and then, uh, or I'll keep a lot of them, but I'll sell some of them and I'll give some of them away to local woodworkers. And then, very last case, this ditch scenario, I'll put them in a wheelbarrow and take them down to my neighbor's house and have him burn them in his wood pit. So, Nick, before you left, you gave me a whole bunch of uh, walnut and a little bit of maple strips. You remember that? Mm hmm. Uh, yep. Did I ever tell you what I did with that? No. I'm going to show you real quick. All right. He's He made a stripper pole on his lathe. There you go. Does he have a lathe? Does he have a lathe? Uh, I don't think so. See, that's what that, you need to do. Then you can use all those little pieces and do some turning. I don't. But he gave me all these little... It's probably dirty because I use it for everything. But it's dirty. I made it for my recliner. And I glued it all together. I made it from a recliner, and it stretches over the uh, the sides, so I can have a computer rack or like you know I can eat like a basic table when I sit in my recliner. And it's all because of Nick here giving me his scraps before he left. He's like, "Here, take this crap." Congratulations, you made a an expensive TV tray. <laughs> I did. It wasn't expensive because you paid for it, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I I literally bought I bought a ton of I bought a like a long time ago I bought a ton of rough sawn walnut from a dude who was a woodworker who was getting out of the business yeah and uh, that was all the scrap from that but it's beautiful beautiful stuff but let's wrap this up all right folks so I would love to thank our sponsors once again and before we even thank our sponsors I want to thank Lawrence from Orca Abrasives uh, yes. check him out. He's got some of the absolute best abrasives you can buy and the buffing pads for like Odie's oil and other oil finishes. If you hit him up on Instagram, it's at Orca Abrasives. If you're looking for 10% off your order through Orca Abrasives, use promo code Sawdust Nation 10. Lawrence will hook you up over there. And uh, once again, I'd like to thank PWNCNC for being our largest sponsor. Uh, Daniel over there is always cooking up some great stuff, so check him out at pwncnc.com or hit him up at pwncnc on the big ig he's got big things coming uh we're in a chat with these guys they're talking about some some really really cool stuff they're going to be releasing so check them out and stay tuned for more information on that uh if you'd like five percent off your order at pwncnc you saw a uh, promo code sawdust nation 981 981 yep let's talk about uh total boat thank you guys for your continued support um, we can offer you a 10% off promo code to Total Boat, but you have to DM us or you have to shoot us an email at sawdustnationpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, I want to give a shout out to where new affiliates of is makerstock.com. If you're looking for acrylic or Baltic birch, real thin stuff for lasering, they've got it. They even have veneers and the veneers come with like 3M backing on it. So you can just stick it right on. You don't have to use any of that glue. So check them out at makerstock.com. If you want 10% off your order at makerstock.com, you can use the one-time promo code SAWDUST10. Anyway, that's all we have for sponsors and affiliates. And uh, I'm going to kick it on over to Josh to tell you how to get a hold of us. Actually, I do want to hit on the fact that we got a new Patreon this last podcast. Uh, I don't think we mentioned. And uh, John Davis joined us as a Patreon uh, back at Sawdust. So thank you to him. Um, if you would like to become a patron, you can always hit us up on Patreon. We got three different tiers. The, the top tier, though, is where it's at. That's where you get to watch us live. That's where you get two entries. I mean, it's definitely worth it, Joey. I mean, you can speak to it better than I can, but uh, minus the ants, I think it's worth it. <laughs> so, thank you to all the patrons. Thank you to everyone that's newly subscribed, and hopefully, we can get some uh, new listeners to subscribe and. Reap the benefits of that. If you'd like to get a hold of us, though, well, first of all, you can get a hold of Joey and Instagram. You can go ahead and ask some questions, ask him, uh, hit him up on his YouTube, which is, I don't have it in front of me, but it's Joey Steel Blade, Blade Woodworks, isn't it? Steel Blade Steel Woodworks. Blade there Woodworks. it goes. Yep. Go ahead and contact him. Thank you, Joey, for joining us today on the podcast. We highly appreciate it. You're always a pleasure to have on. Um, you can always contact uh, the three of us 
Nick, Nap, and I at the Sawdust Nation podcast on Instagram. You never know who's going to answer, but that's part of the fun. You can get hold of Nap from Nap's Nutty Works LLC. Uh, he's not here, but he's currently moving, so that's a great excuse. We have Nick from MPG Creations. Yep. And then myself, Josh from North Country Woodworking, all on Instagram. And then if you'd like to send us anything f- for uh, the podcast, voice recordings, pictures, or what have you, you can hit us up at our Gmail account at Sawdust Nation Podcast at Gmail. And That's right. uh, with that, if you'd like to rate us five stars on iTunes, you can go ahead and rate us five stars. If you don't, let us know why. If you have any comments or ways to improve the podcast, go ahead and reach out. And with that, let's go with final words, starting with Joey. Well, I'd, first of all, I'd like to thank y'all for having me on. Um, I had a great time. But uh, no, I mean, uh, you know, if anybody out there has any questions and I can help, I'll always willing and if I'm able to we'll give y'all some advice or any questions about CNC, the laser, um, 3D printing. I am kind of know a little bit, but not a whole lot. I'm still trying to learn that. But uh, yeah, just out here making some things. If you're interested in anything that I'm making, just hit me up on uh, Instagram and we can talk about it. But other than that, that's about it. All right. Well, final words, Nick. Well, yes. Um, Which to let you guys know that you should take care of yourselves and each other. And uh, we love doing what we do. Thank you for tuning in for over 100 episodes now. And uh, we'll see you on the flip side. Josh. Ah, it's kind of weird not to have a uh, nap here, but, uh, you know, we know he's doing big, uh, important things right now. Um, and with that, final words is thank you for listening to the podcast. It's 101 episodes of Sawdust Nation Goodness, and it's all because of you the community that we're building around it. Hopefully you can tune us on when you're basically going to work, making that cup of coffee, working out in the shop. It doesn't matter where you're listening to us. It's just a matter that you are listening. And uh, with that, go make some sawdust. And this is Sawdust Nation signing out. Not for the last time, but for this time. That was a good episode, man. Yeah, we got in some really deep conversation about the economy at one point, but we always like uh, the deep. We like it deep. Yeah, well, you know, hard and fast. That's right.